ACC, tied for most this year, along with Liz Kitley, last year's Conference Player of the Year and the front runner to take it home this year. And we are underway. Uh, another great crowd at the KFC Yum Center. Jefferson with the ball in her hands, the grad transfer from JMU. Olivia Cochran has been a constant here. She has, and I love that decision to go inside to her right away and set the tone in the paint against a great defender in Michaela Timpson. Cochran is a senior, and she intends to come back next year. Latson misses her first shot. Terrific pass from Jefferson to find Sydney Taylor. Yeah, and it's senior night, and they're fired up. That's a great pass, a great finish. Let's take a look at our star stories for players that have been crushing it of late, brought to you by Crush. We already talked about Tania Lats in last four games, averaging 30 per, and Kiki Jefferson getting into double figures. Yeah, Kiki Jefferson has been great for the Cardinals all season. She's been a constant, a big guard that can score tough finishes, scores it in a lot of ways. And Latson, we've talked about her enough. She's definitely going to put points on the board. She's great getting downhill and getting in the paint. The Jetty with the miss. Louisville streaking out to the 6 nothing start. Another good look underneath and the finish by Harris. And Brooke Wyckoff has seen enough. Eight nothing, Louisville, Florida State takes the timeout. Um, they're just playing locked in and focused and fun to watch so far. And that was one thing that Jeff Walls challenged them on. He said he wanted to see some toughness from them after the game, the loss to Virginia. He said they had to take personal pride KK Timpson, Michaela Timpson gets the first basket and they have come out of the gates very strongly in this game. Louisville will play at Notre Dame on Sunday. So their fate is in their hands to get into the top four and get that double bye in the ACC tournament. Snoop Turnage gets the rebound and gets it over into the hands of Latson. It's a great position to be in when you control your own destiny, especially being able to play at home today they have a great opportunity. Turnage all the way across the court to Gordon. Good layoff to Timpson. And I like Florida State coming out of that timeout with an emphasis on shot selection and getting into the paint. Yeah. Here's Cochran. The veteran takes it off the bounce. I like that drive by Cochran against the, you know, undersized Snoop Turnage. That's a great decision to just take advantage of that mismatch. Cochran at 6'4", Turnage about three inches shorter. And there is Turnage, given name Brianna, but known as Snoop because apparently when she was younger, she had dreadlocks like Snoop Dogg. Oh, that, that's the interesting. A little, a little <laughs> trivia there for you. Pajetti. <laughs> My favorite Finnish player got the basket on the other end for Florida State. Gordon with the miss. Florida State not getting a lot of rebounds and second chances. Latson got away with what Louisville thought was a foul. Gave it up to Timpson. Nice defensive play by Ricards, but Timpson was able to recover. And there was a lot of contact on that play, but I think that's Taylor playing just a little bit too fast. And got to be careful with plays like that, letting Florida State get into their transition game. Yeah, that's their strength. My Forsberg, Brian Burnett, Teresa Stuck, our officials this evening in Louisville. A little bit of daylight allowed Taylor to shoot, and now the held ball gets it back over to Florida State. Now this Louisville lineup was shaken up a couple of games ago for two straight games. That was a win at Georgia Tech and then a loss to Virginia. And there you see the three different starting lineups, the most successful with who we're seeing out there today. And it's senior night, so Jeff Wall said Taylor Jefferson and Ricards would all start today, but kind of back to the way things had been for most of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, sometimes it's a matchup thing. It's defensive. It could be for whatever reasons that you might need to shake up a lineup, but. These players are off to a great start today in tonight's matchup. And they've obviously had a lot of success on the, on the year. 
Ball kept alive. Good hustle by Nyla Harris, who's just a sophomore, has really upped her numbers from last season. Yeah, she's definitely one of my favorites to watch. She has some spice to her. She's aggressive. She plays hard. Aquin left it short. Timpson got the rebound. Michaela Timpson closing in on Natasha Howard's single season double double record. Natasha Howard, who plays for, I believe, the Dallas Wings. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> Heck of a player. And there is a travel. The ball belongs to Louisville. Look you could see earlier in that possession that uh, Louisville doing a great job at transition defense and getting in front of Tania Latson. They stopped her on the block, forced her to have to make an extra pass. She is a player that they know they're going to have to focus on keeping out of the paint. And Taylor brings it up. Taylor, Jefferson, and Ricards, all of them grad transfers starting in their final, their first and final season at Louisville. Eight new players for Jeff Walls as Ricards before the transfer hits. Yeah. And Ricards doesn't look to score much, but when she does, it's definitely that mid-range game. She's great at knocking down that elbow free throw line jumper. Averaging seven points per game. Latson still looking for her first points. Tanaya averaging 22, that's fourth in the league. And Timpson gets in there for yet another rebound. Florida State actually leads in this series. They've won, Louisville has won two in a row, however, and Latson gets her first bucket. And great decision by Latson. She gets a full head of steam going downhill, gets Taylor, trying to beat her to the spot, and just pulls it back for the jumper. And Coach Brooke Wyckoff so impressed with the maturity. She's only a sophomore. We had a chance to talk to Latson today. Mm -hmm. I, you know, she, I asked her what she thought her growth area was from her freshman, her incredible freshman season to this season, and she said her patience. And I think that that is, you know, such a mature thing for somebody to say that I'm 34, I'm still working on my patience. So that, yes. <laughs> that it, you know, you see it. You see it in her game and her decision making that she's definitely grown from last season. Concentrating more on making the right pass, getting some rebounds, and she can steal the ball too. Yeah, definitely getting it done on both ends of the floor, and it's a nice finish by Bonner. Maya Bonner. Her first year after transferring from Cal, where she was a teammate of Jada Curry, who plays for Louisville. And there's Jada. A couple of former Bears on the court. And of course, Cal will be in the ACC next year. We're still trying to wrap our heads around that. <laughs> Shot clock. It's going to look different. Oh, very different. Winding down. Nice move by Ricards. It's Louisville back on top. There's Timpson with the turnaround. Yeah, that's a great play. And I love that she caught it off the block a little bit and gave herself some space to get momentum to the rim as Ricards has another finish at the rim. How she's, about that? You know, I said she doesn't look to score much, <laughs> and already she's like, I'm going to put the team on my back this she's, quarter. <laughs> she certainly has. She's got six points, only averages seven per game. Well, that's a little off balance shot that goes in. How about that? And then she looked over and said something to the Louisville bench, and their coaches are cracking up about it. So she could be funny during the game, too. Yeah, that, I <laughs> doubt what she said was funny. <laughs> Jeff Walls is such a great coaching staff that have been with him for several years now. Taylor a little bit too strong. Yeah, she's been shooting the ball so well the last few games. And, you know, you'd like to see that continue. She has a few good looks today. Louisville would love to see those and go there, down. That's going to be a foul on Alexis Tucker, who extended her arm. Tania Ladson getting the tough jumper to fall. She had a few words to say to the Cardinals bench. <laughs> she hits the tough shot. So the officials are going to look at that last play. 
to see if Tucker's extension of her arm was too aggressive. And we will look at it together. I think that you play on with that. Doesn't look excessive to me. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, obviously there's some contact to the chin, probably an automatic maybe because of that, but I don't think there was any ill intent there, just typical push off. She got her, you could see in the face originally, and then extended. They got her, I think, on the second play, which was yeah. when she extended her arm to try to get Curry away, and now get a decision from my Forsberg. So they have upgraded it. I mean, things have changed since I was playing college <laughs> college basketball, so definitely I see the, the hit to the face, so I, that is a good, it's a good call because of that contact. Yeah. We probably call the second piece of it, you know, but she gets in the face first and then. Is anything about the shoulders yes. an issue? Uh, not always, but this one is. All right, my Forsberg just came over and said she kind of popped her, and it uh, was up, just yeah. up in her, uh, in her face. So Jefferson goes to the free throw line. My Forsberg, a good veteran official that was around when you played. Yeah, she's one of my favorites. Yep, excellent <laughs> official. Grew up in Denmark. Very fascinating backstory. Speaks a lot of languages. Sarah Bajetti does too. I think you know Bajetti. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Bajetti is all, the Finnish player says that she sometimes likes to maybe say things pejoratively, but in Finnish, because she doesn't think the officials will know what she's saying. <laughs> My, but she still might. gets to get it out. Yes, <laughs> somehow you're able to release it and not get in trouble. <laughs> that, how is that not a carry? I think they're gonna say she didn't quite have it in possession yet, so they let that one go. Another scrum for the ball. And a foul will be called on that. Jefferson with the pass underneath to Istanbulolu, who stays with it, gets the rebound, and yeah, there's some contact. It's always gonna be foul on the defense when it's a trip. Another whistle and an offensive foul this time as Tucker landed in the paint. I mean, it's physical out here. Both teams are playing for something. They know what's on the line. So I expect this game to have this level of physicality till the end. Treadwell got the Florida State foul. That last moving screen was on Ricards. But Jetty from way downtown, she's a streaky shooter. She is, when she's hot, she's hot, and I think she's had a few times this year where she has really gotten hot from behind the arc. So still kind of searching for that in this game. I believe she's 0 for 3 so far from behind the arc. Yeah, she had three straight games in which she hit career high five threes against Clemson, Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech. 31 in that game against Virginia Tech was ACC freshman, or player of the week, pardon me, during that stretch. But she can also go cold. Not able to chase it down. And that's a good job by the Cardinals defense. That's something that has been a challenge from Coach Walls for them all season is their defensive intensity and consistency and being locked in and focused. And so far today, I would say they are focused on that game plan. Inside the final 40 seconds of the first quarter. Tough shot by Harris, didn't hit. And then the finish. 
goes in and out. If that would have dropped, oh. that would have been super nice. Yeah. But now Louisville can hang on for the last shot of the quarter. Harris, the fans are screaming because she didn't know how wide open she was as the defender had fallen away. And I would have liked to see a Louisville guard come and get that ball and take control of that last possession. Instead, they give Florida State a chance to score to end the quarter. Gordon with the ball in her hands. That's a big time collision. Looks like the foul is on Harris. That's a hard one for Harris who took a hit. First one on Nyla. So I believe the foul is the push on Harris pushing the screener yes. into Jefferson. Okay, yeah. Correct. It's not Jefferson is the one who was hurt. Yes, it was Harris with the push. A little friendly fire there that <laughs> got Jefferson to the floor. State has to be quick here. The Jetty's going to shoot it. So an entertaining first quarter. Louisville got out quickly, up by eight at one point, but lead by two after one. WNBA, we know somebody by the name of Caitlin Clark apparently is available in the WNBA draft. I've yeah, heard good things. <laughs> Caitlin making that announcement. There's Marissa Russell, one of the people who will be back next year from Ottawa, capital of Canada. Pam Ward and Jasmine Thomas joining you in a game that has huge implications here in the ACC. Both teams 11 and five in the league trying to get into the top four. Right now, Louisville is in the four spot and control the world in destiny, trying to get in to get a double buy in the ACC tournament. And Omaria Gordon has been terrific for the Seminoles this season. You see her knock down the three at the top of the key. She's definitely a, cl a clear top candidate for most improved and one of my favorites. First lead of the game for Florida State, trailed by eight early. Gordon has doubled her point production from last season. In the top 20 in scoring in the league right now and has emerged as a bit of a floor general. Russell, back rim. The Cards has had a nice game. And you gotta love to see this effort on the boards from the Cardinals. And Louisville is cold. We've gone about three minutes now without scoring, going back to the first quarter for Jeff Walls, who talked about trying to find some consistency with this team and just how difficult it is. Taylor, Jefferson, Ricards, all grad transfers. He's got some freshmen sprinkled in and that's a lot to try to mesh together. It is, and that, you know, you're coming down toward the end of the season, and at some point still looks like they're trying to figure it out. As OMG has another <laughs> strong take to the basket. This time, she gets it to fall, has a chance at the free throw line. Now, Maria Gordon, known as OMG, to her teammates, and she makes some OMG plays, too. There you see her get that lane line and makes the finish with contact from Curry. It's a three-point play. Gordon out of Bradenton, Florida. Started as a true freshman and has really evolved over the last couple of years for this Florida State team that loves to get points in transitions. Don't really have a true post player. Very guard-oriented. Jefferson getting it back to Curry, looked inside and turned it, read it beautifully. And now OMG goes behind her back to get some space. And that's a travel by Carla Viegas, who was absolutely going to shoot a three. Absolutely going <laughs> to shoot a three. She was out the last few games, hasn't played since Pitt, which was a great game for her. She, you know, was definitely starting to emerge and was out with a non-COVID illness for a few games. So. They're coming off a game where they only made one three-pointer, so it's no question why she's on the floor. How about scoring 84 points against Boston College in their last game, and they only made, as you said, one three. That's remarkable. Cochran ends the drought. And you know, we haven't seen much from Cochran since the first possession of the game, and I would like to see Louisville continue to keep her involved in this game. Watson got to the rim but couldn't finish. Now Harris 
comes away, gives it up to Ricards. Jefferson driving on turnage. It's really impressive the way Jefferson is able to finish. She finishes with contact, and just her ability to make tough shots is very high. Grad transfer out of JMU, James Madison. 10.10 rebound double-double against Virginia in her last game. First one in the Louisville uniform. OMG for three, missed everything. And she's shooting it well, well from out there on this season at around 39%, but that one just off the mark. Cochran able to very nicely gather it. Yeah. I love for Cochran to stay with that and get the finish. You know, the shot blocking by Timpson probably altered that first one, but she makes the second go at it. Timpson leading the ACC in blocks even more than Liz Kitley. Latson gets in, and that's Latson's game, right? Just going right for the rim. Going right for the rim. She's strong, full speed. Once she gets downhill, she's hard to stop. Jefferson with the hoop and was fouled. You know, I talked about her being able to make tough shots, and boy, if this isn't one of the toughest. That is a tough finish over KK Timpson, as Jefferson will go to the foul line at a chance for an extra point. Yeah, Timpson with a lot of contact. That's the first foul on her. Kiki, a graduate guard, grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, was the Sun Belt Player of the Year last year at JMU. Also the tournament MVP. And it was interesting talking to Jeff Walls about Taylor, Jefferson, Ricards. Like Jefferson, didn't he say she played against three ranked teams in four years at JMU? Taylor. Oh, it, was or it might have been both of them. I, yeah, I can't remember, but for sure, I think he said that for Jefferson, that was in the tournament where she yeah. even faced those teams, whereas Taylor, in, in all of her time, yeah, it only played against three. And whereas in the ACC, you're playing them almost every game. Almost every game. So it's quite a, an adjustment. <laughs> Kiki heating up. I love how the Cardinals have been able to convert when they can get out in transition. The fans love it too. So they lead by four. Bajetti got in the no man's land. Snoop Turnage with the miss. A rebound by Sydney Taylor, the UMass grad transfer. First team All-Atlantic 10 last year. And then is stuffed and fouled, ultimately. You see the outlet by Cochran and Kiki Jefferson just getting downhill and slicing through the defense and finishing at the rim in transition. Amaya Bonner with the foul and now That sends Taylor to the line. We got lacrosse coming up for you on Saturday. First, it's women's action. North Carolina takes on Notre Dame. Then a men's matchup between number eight Johns Hopkins and number two Virginia on the ACC network and also the ESPN app. Out of bounds, the ball stays with Louisville. Louisville's now hit five of its last seven shots. Timpson comes back in. She, along with Latson, the two captains on this team. 20 seconds to shoot. Lily Love lost it. Latson, one on two, waits for some help. Ball goes out of bounds, but it's still with the Seminoles. It's an 11-2 Louisville run. Great look at Brooke Wyckoff. Second year as the head coach, was a terrific player at Florida State and also was in the league for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's just a great person. I love just watching her coach this group, and you can tell she just loves and cares about her players so much on and off the court, and I just, I love coaches like that. And played overseas and in the WNBA for nine years. Ten-year-old daughter Avery, no doubt, cheering. As we take a break, Louisville catching fire here, now up by five. Every 
Prokop, the head coach for Florida State. As most of you or many of you know, she was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. And some good news on Tuesday, day before yesterday, she had her fourth and final chemo treatment. And uh, she says she's feeling well, feeling good, and uh, very optimistic. And that's great news that she's over that and, and no radiation follow-up. Yeah, terrific news. I can't imagine what going through that during a season is like, but so happy for her that that part is over and I'm sure she'll ring the bell soon let's hope so she's certainly uh, done a great job at her alma mater and one of the one of the really nice good people out there and that's some good news for coach wyckoff to have that we hope behind her forever louisville good ball movement and it drops for taylor and I love that. Those are the types of shots that go in. Coach Walls talked about it, and Taylor's incredible performance off the bench in Georgia Tech is that she wasn't forcing anything. She was getting it all out of the offense, and that is what type of three-pointer she just hit right there. Sydney Taylor, one of the seniors we honored tonight, knocks down the triple from the wing. And the, Car the Cardinals are up 30, 32 to 24. You know, they weathered a little bit of a run early coming back um, in that first quarter. They started off great, and then Florida State got a rhythm. But right now, it still looks like the Cardinals are in control of this game. 14 to 2 run. Florida State scoreless in over two minutes now. Taylor guarded by Gordon. He drops back on defense. Lily Love, that's the second time she has fumbled a ba a basketball. Now Latson lost it. She's saying it's off a Louisville player. And it has been ruled thusly. I think she sold that one. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe karma caught up with them because they just turned it right back <laughs> over. But yes, the Emmy goes to Tanai Latson. Sold it. Latson, such a great player. Latson and, you know, Daisha Fair over at Syracuse having a great year, not getting a lot of national recognition, and they should. They are definitely scoring enough points Ooh. to put the country on notice. Syracuse and NC State locked up in quite a game right now. It's going to be a great finish. The ACC tournament's going to be insane. Lob, nice pass, Latson to Timpson, but Timpson didn't have the touch. And great job by Louisville to get that stop without fouling. That's a travel, they got it. And let's take a look at what's going on in South Bend, Indiana right now. Virginia Tech does have the number one seed locked in in the ACC, but Notre Dame is up by, help me Dookie, eight with <laughs> under two minutes left to go. Liz Kitley, 12 points and nine rebounds. But Notre Dame, boy, what a big win that would be for the Irish. Latson missed everything. And Notre Dame hosts Louisville on Sunday. Exactly. I was just going to say, we talked about those teams that are in this, you know, running, trying to get into that top four. So that would be a huge win for Notre Dame. Westfeld having another big game. Hidalgo with the double-double. So minute 46 left to go. Eight-point advantage for the Irish. Alexis Tucker just picked up her second foul for the Knowles. So much on the line again. Coming into play today, there were six teams fighting for the final two top four spots in the ACC. Taylor rid herself of Latson and nailed it. I love the patience on that shot. She had all the time in the world to get it off. You just knew that one had to go in. Her second three of the night. It's an 11 point lead. Latson got it. Knocked away. 
And right, how Taylor. about that? Taylor gets the defensive assignment to start on Latson. That's been a challenge all year. Here you see her with the patience to knock down the three. And then on the other end, she gets a disruptive play that forces the Seminoles to have to take it out out of bounds. Stop Latson's drive. Gordon struggling to get it in. And she's everywhere. Sydney Taylor making another play. The Jetty picks up the foul. Sydney Taylor has scored the last seven points for Louisville. We show you just Sydney Taylor doing everything on both sides of the ball. She's definitely, definitely locked in tonight on the offensive and defensive side. Playing what could likely be her last game here in Louisville unless Louisville somehow gets a top 16 national seed. Here she is again. You can definitely tell that she is feeling confident right now. She's in a groove. She has a rhythm. She's not playing too fast. She's taking great shots. And I would argue that it's because of her intensity on the defensive end. It helps those shots go in as KK Timpson has a basket that silences the crowd a bit. So that does carry over what you do on defense to offense. I think it does. I think it brings that intensity. It locks you into the game, especially when you have an assignment like she has guarding Latson. Yeah, that's quite an assignment. Latson only has six points, three of eight from the floor. Jefferson in and out. But the putback by Harris. Louisville is doing a terrific job on the glass. I believe that's their eighth offensive rebound, and they are out rebounding the Seminoles 24 to 13. Yeah, and that was a point of emphasis for Coach Brooke Wyckoff for the Knowles. Especially wanted to be able to get second and third chances, and then I believe they only have one offensive rebound as a team. And meanwhile, this Louisville team playing inspired basketball. 16 to two run over the last five minutes. I mean, they're shooting almost 50% from the floor. Move us. Florida State, pardon me, just one of nine from distance. And hitting threes, also something that was important for Coach Wyckoff to kind of keep the defense honest since they like to drive to the rim so much as well, and they have not been able to do that. So we approach a minute to go in a second quarter that has belonged Mostly to Sydney Taylor. That was an incredible finish. Jada Curry gets the and one, and Timpson even gets a hand on it late. That could have almost been a goaltend. She has that type of athleticism, but the ball still falls. So Jada Curry gets the and one. Just a little change of pace. Gets all the way to the rim, and Timpson tips it, and, and it still goes in. Latson, Turnage, and then Timson all in on the defensive effort to stop Curry. Foul was on Turnage. That is her first. We talked to Coach Walls about Curry and just having her stay consistent. She's a player that can absolutely put points on the board. You saw her do it at Cal as well, but it's been consistency for her and just the confidence to believe in herself that she can do it every game. She was our leading scorer last year in Berkeley, averaged almost 16 points per game, but Jetty ran into Russell. And Florida State really struggling on offense. The defense of Louisville turning it up a bit. Louisville going for that two for one. The Jetty with another miss. She's now one of eight from the floor and has missed all four of her threes. We talked about her being a streaky shooter and right now she's streaking downwards. Yeah, and that shot selection can be tough when you have this deficit. Better to just get quality shots on goal. Curry with the miss and now Florida State got tied up. Possession arrow towards the Seminoles, who will have just under 10 seconds to get a shot off. They've been outscored by 15 in this quarter. And have missed eight of their last nine shots, but they have Latson. Latson stops, pops for three, in and out. 
And that might just encapsulate the entire second quarter, certainly, for the Seminoles, who were outscored by 15, 19 to two, two games ago. That's a, a home loss. They are trying to avoid that same outcome here. Sarah Bajetti has not been shooting the ball well, but this time she was able to draw contact in the first half. Bajetti missed seven of her eight shots. Yeah, and I, you know, I like the decision to be aggressive and get in the paint. That is a tough finish if it did go, but you know, when it's not falling down from the outside, the decision to get to the paint and get to the line is a good one. And that is what Florida State is known for. Jetty in her fifth year out of Helsinki, Finland. Fourth year at Florida State after starting off at Arizona State. Gets both of those free throws after she was fouled by Nyla Harris who picked up her second. Both teams trying to finish in the top four in the league. Nobody checked Cochran. Nobody. And that is the best rebounder on this Cardinals team. So Florida State, just a, a terrible mistake yeah, to just let her run in and uncontested and get a putback. And number 44, as you mentioned, their best rebounder, averaging six and a half per game. Turnage with the miss and another non-offensive rebound for the Seminoles. Now ten, has missed 10 of their 11 shots from distance. Nyla Harris with another bucket. Gordon getting it out to Turnage. Inside, that's a good look to Timpson, but she left it short, maybe too far under the rim. Now Jefferson with the miss, asking for the foul, but none came. This is Florida State's pace right now, but they've not been able to capitalize. Gordon got fouled. Yeah, and if, if the Cardinals don't foul, then they, you know, they have Florida State right where they want them. They're not able to hit shots, and then the Cardinals are coming back down on the other end and getting a better shot selection than Florida State. You can see Jefferson missed that last one, but that's definitely a shot that they want to have. And then Kiki was called for the foul on Gordon. As champ week looms, here's our last regular season Tuesday men's basketball doubleheader double on the ACC Network in the app. Seven Eastern Tuesday, it's Carolina, Notre Dame, then Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, who's on the bubble to try to get in to the NCAA tournament. Tuesday on the ACC Network, and you know what happens Wednesday, the ACC tournament for the women begins in Greensboro. Exciting times, and one of my I know. Best you memories yep. are playing in the ACC tournament. Yeah. I love it. It's Duke so did pretty fun. well. Yeah. Yeah, we did all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and both of these teams do not want to play until Friday. Right? You want the double bye. You do. You want the double bye for the obvious reasons. You get a little bit of rest, but also just to work on some things and get your rhythm going. Good rebound by Harris whose offense has been catching up to her good defense and rebounding now in her second year. Shot clock winding down. They need a shot. It's Cochran. Just too strong, but another offensive opportunity thanks to Taylor. Yeah, I love the focus by the Cardinals on the glass on both sides of the ball. And Jefferson lost it. Gordon. Right down the lane and tried to finish with her left hand. The jetty settles, drives, bottled up, tough shot, and it wouldn't go. Florida State cannot get anything to fall. Even when they get some good looks around the rim, they're not dropping. And then on the other end, Ricards makes some pay in transition. And the lead is 19. Louisville kind of giving Florida State a taste of its own medicine by pushing pace, scoring in transition. And when they score, they get their defense set. So then the Seminoles can't just get out in transition and run, which is what they want to do. Exactly. Gordon misses another one from beyond the arc. <laughs> oh, 
McCard settles it for one of the few times that we've seen him do that as of late. Trying to go inside, but too much on the pass intended for Harris. And Coach Wall said that, did say that they want to be patient, that the Seminoles defense can start off aggressive and really get up into you, but if you're patient, then you can find whatever you want. And there you just see a miss, a miscue. The pass was just a little off, but it was the right high-low look from Cochran to Harris down low. Cochran had some words from Coach Walls before she sat down on the bench. Talking about that play. And there's a foul as Gordon tried to tightrope the baseline. Yeah, good. Bit of a bailout right there. She got herself in trouble, but she did attack the, the feet of, you know, she's a quick guard. Attack the feet of the slower is Stumbalulu and draws the foul. Stumbalulu, someone you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she, when I played for Fenerbahce in Turkey, she was on the younger team. So, yeah, it's fun for me to see her grow up and see her over here doing well. She started a few games here at Louisville and just has a bright future ahead of her. And number 11 just set the screen there from Istanbul. There she is. That was a kick, and they got Timson for it. Wyckoff's team trying to figure it out. They led by two in the second quarter, and since then it's been all Louisville. Taylor with the drive. Another offensive rebound by Harris. And I think that's what it's going to take from Florida State to pick it up on the defensive end, be more disruptive, but they're going to need to rebound the basketball. Shot clock winding down. Good defense by Latson, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jefferson just threw it up and it went in. How did that go in? <laughs> now Latson on the other end with a chance at a three-point play. But Florida State playing some good defense on the other end, and then they got Kiki. Shot clock winding down, and Jefferson just throws it up. It's a lot of <laughs> contact there. Didn't think anything would come out of that possession, and really she good. puts it in. Yeah, good defense right by Latson, <laughs> and then she just throws it up one-handed, and Marissa Russell goes, that's the way you do it. <laughs> Nothing to it, just the way we drew it up. Latson was fouled by Ricards and gets the three-point play. Second foul on Ricards. Kiki gets a nice hand as she heads over to the bench. 10.7 rebounds, three assists. Coming off a double-double against Virginia. Might get another one here tonight. Taylor, good drive, and there's your foul. Yeah. And Louisville in control up 51-33 as we take a timeout. Louisville, this is a team that doesn't have a dominating scorer. A lot of balance again tonight. Yeah, a lot of balance. And these three have been doing it all season. And then you see Ricards and Harris chipping in with eight each. And that's just how they play. They got a lot of talent on that team. Everybody does their part. And any given night, any one player could go off. But for the most part, it's, it's always going to be balanced. Uh, uh, Kiki Jefferson, their leading scorer, averaging just over 13 points a game. That's 20th in the ACC. They have one player in the top 20 in the ACC in scoring. And it's Jefferson. This is Taylor at the line. But sometimes it's a it's nice to have like a Latson or somebody you know you can go to, a Deja Kelly. Maybe not a great example of North Carolina loss tonight at Boston College, but you know, they, that, it's a blessing and a curse, right, to have a balanced scoring team. Yeah, because the same way as if everybody's on in one night, sometimes everybody can be off. And then who's going to be that one player that can take over a quarter or that can manipulate the defense enough to get their own points but also open things up for everybody else? Yeah. Turnus just took an extra step. Nyla Harris is all fired up out there, too. The sophomore, I know you really like her. <laughs> I do. Good yeah. animation out there. There's Nyla, sophomore out of Orlando. Mungmo's having a good night tonight. That 
ticked off the rim for Curry. Yeah, it was a great take. Just couldn't get it to go. And, you know, it's been tough for Florida State in this game. And Latson can't get the jumper to go. Turnage tries to keep it alive, but they're just struggling. Unable to, they're, they're still struggling from the three point line. That's continuing from their game against Boston College. Now, this is a team, Florida State, that leads the ACC in scoring, averaging 81 points per game. And as you see, they only have 33, shooting 30% overall and have missed 12 of their 13 threes. And you have to give Louisville's defense a lot of credit, but they have also missed some opportunities as well. Yeah. And I'm curious to see if at some point the Seminoles decide to extend pressure Maybe try to get some turnovers, get something going, get some momentum. Marissa Russell, who's an intern at the Broadcasting Center here at Louisville. Yeah, she's coming for our jobs, Pam. That's it. <laughs> Have mine. <laughs> but she's a delightful kid from uh, Ottawa. Coming back next year. And a lot of new faces again for Louisville. But that's kind of become the norm. But Jetty still over from distance. Yeah, you see Louisville showing some zone, which is usually tough to rebound out of zone, but they're still showing that they can get stops in that too. But Jetty has Latson, founder, got it. And that's what you'll want to see Florida State doing some more of. That is their comfort to pick up the tempo of this game and be able to get out and run and get some finishes. They only have four fast break points. And usually that's their bread and butter. Three minutes to go in the third. Watson went for the steal. Russell, good look. In and out and a foul on Florida State in the rush for the rebound. They're showing it's on Latson. It was interesting talking to Tania Latson, and I, you asked about goals, and she said she wants to be player of the year. Yeah, national player. National, not ACC player of the year. National player of the year. National player of the year. I think that's a, a great goal for her to have. She's a young player. She's already, what did we say, six 30-point games. Yeah, just this tied year. Tied with an Elizabeth Kitley for the amount of 30-point games in a season. That's good company to be in. Yes. Uh, I like that goal for her. Yeah, I love it. And the, the confidence, and as you mentioned, she's young, just a sophomore, true sophomore. Another miss from the outside. Louisville has gone two and a half minutes without a point, but still lead by 18. Almost turned it over. The officials are making sure that the clock is operating properly. There's my Forsberg. Louisville gets the ball, 15 seconds on the shot clock. It was showing 20. It's just some of what Latson has done in her young career. Yeah. She's playing more defense this year. Her assist numbers are up. Still yeah. scoring it at a high clip. One of the two ACC players ranked in the top 10 of all three of those categories. The other one's Hannah Hidalgo. Notre Dame with a huge upset win at home tonight against Virginia Tech. Hidalgo had another double-double. And I think along with Juju Watkins, there's some other great freshmen, but certainly in the National Freshman of the Year conversation, Marissa Russell. It's a nice, strong left-handed take. And the last few possessions, the Cardinals had a good look at it. And Russell gets the lead back up to 20. Timeout in Louisville. Why did we Tech tonight? Florida State has Clemson, Virginia Tech, who lost to Notre Dame, has Virginia. Wake Forest, NC State, Duke Carolina, always big. Carolina lost at BC tonight. BC had a 10-game losing streak snapped. 
and NC State has just defeated Syracuse in overtime. Had Syracuse won, they would have sewn up the number two seed next week in Greensboro. So all we know still, is Virginia Tech's the number one seed. <laughs> yeah, it's That's wild. That's how crazy it's been. It is wild, but it is so fun to watch as you see Latson get a signature full court drive to the basket. Latson now with 13 points. What has been a, an incredible night already in the ACC. North Carolina and Virginia Tech losing. Louisville trying to snap this two game home losing streak. Lost to Virginia in their last game on Sunday. Blew a fourth quarter lead. Cochran, strong. And I like the patience, the execution to get the ball to Cochran against uh, the, the freshman Treadwell and just a nice strong drive for yeah. Cochran. And you had mentioned that Coach Walls mentioned that at shoot around, talking about patience on offense. Treadwell took one in the face, got the shot off, and couldn't get the follow. Wanted to see a sense of urgency. He was not pleased, obviously, with the way that Virginia game ended. And they have just taken over this game since early in the second quarter. Good play by Bonner to knock it out. 13 seconds to shoot for the cards. Nice inbounds. Great execution by the Cardinals. Treadwell had a little issue with her contact. So she's coming out of the game. Michaela Timpson comes back in. Timpson tonight, 10.7 rebounds. It's the biggest lead of the game. 22 points for Louisville. Shot clock off for Latson. In and out for Villegas. It has been, I think the NCAA tournament's gonna be incredible. The ACC tournament, we're not gonna know who's playing who until Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't been tuned in to women's basketball, you have been missing out. It has been great. And there was one point in the season not too long ago where every number two team in the country lost to an unranked team once they got to number two in the country. Not only lost, but lost to an unranked team. It's been that kind of year. And we've seen a lot of different teams at number two. Ohio State is there now. Ohio State playing Iowa on Sunday. That's going to be oh, that's the, a tough I, ticket. Yeah. Forget it. it. That'll be a good game. Yeah. Timson got the bucket. We remember the last time out between those two teams, Ohio State got the win. And game day is going to be in Iowa City, Caitlin Clark's final regular season game. She announced today that she is indeed going to enter the WNBA draft, will not use her final year of eligibility. Not surprising. Nope. Um, not surprising. She, I think, has done pretty much all she can do other than win a national championship yet at Iowa. And... Indiana, I think, going to sell some season tickets. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, the Fever have that number one pick. Yeah, and I like that announcement timing for her. We talked about it, just being able to have that out the way so she can focus on the postseason, making a run in all the tournaments. Big Ten tournament's going to be in Minneapolis again this year. It was there last year, and it was 90% Iowa fans, at least when they played Ohio State in the final. Florida State showing a little life in this quarter. Getting a few stops and a few buckets. Two by Tempson, that one by Latson. Got a little bit of energy to them. Yeah, Latson's not going to give up. And remember, Louisville did give up a fourth quarter lead their last game here against Virginia. 
Making the fans a little nervous. Yeah, I anticipate a timeout soon by Walls if they continue to score it. They'll get away with one there as the Jetty misses the three. On the other end, Cochran with the finish. Good job by Gordon to try to draw the offensive foul, but the refs weren't buying it. And what a veteran settling play by Cochran. Yeah. To finish that, that was the basket that they needed at that moment. Watson trying to take over, got fouled. Olivia Cochran in transition. Louisville needed a basket. She avoids the charge and finishes it. It's a little short, close range finish. Not quite a layup, not quite a jumper, but glad it went in. Yeah. Saturday afternoon, the first baseball game of the season on the ACC Network. Miami plays rival Florida. got distance but then Sydney throws it away and Jeff says you should have done something else <laughs> not a bad look I think she needed to take a few more dribbles toward the corner to get a better angle um, but not a bad look to throw the ball into Olivia Cochran yeah. yeah Cochran one rebound away from a double double the jetty off night shooting drives on Curry and Coach Wall said that the emphasis was to do a good job at straight line drives by Florida State. And I think that the Cardinals have done a great job at that tonight. Timpson just got a block. Cochran crashes to the floor, nothing call. Latson all the way, but missed it. Timpson helps her out. I'm glad Timpson was there to clean it up. That's a rare miss yeah. by Latson getting a, you know, a wide. Yeah, she pokes it away. It's a great defensive play by Sarah Bacchetti, who is a great defender for the Seminoles team, and finishes it on the other end. Yeah, often draws the most difficult perimeter defensive assignment. Cochran turns, got hit. Maybe Cochran will head to the free throw line. Florida State not able to get much going in this game, but this is a great heads up play by Bajetti to tip it away, get the steal, and the finish on the other end. Cochran at the free throw line, does have a double double tonight, her fourth of the season. Tonight at 10 Eastern, when we are finished, the Nothing But Net crew breaks down the night in the ACC, highlights an analysis of every game tonight, and the look ahead to Sunday, which is going to be insane on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Muffet, Kelsey, Ivory, Kelly. Boy, do they have a lot to talk about tonight. Yeah. What happened in <laughs> South Bend. I wonder if Muffet did a little happy jig in the, uh, in the, in the room there. And also Carolina losing at Boston College. NC State going to overtime against Syracuse. What a night it has been. <laughs> Meanwhile, Louisville has been in control for most of this game. They're up 15. When you're great, your game does the talking. In the ACC, our speaks volumes. 26 appearances. God, which she's only been retired for a few months. <laughs> she she won some things. Yeah, she did. And if that having two bird in your locker room talking to you doesn't inspire your team, I don't know what will. So they've definitely had a good response to that experience. Go talk. We'll do that for you. Yeah, Sue so retiring after a brilliant career in the WNBA. And you know, doing a lot of projects still involved in basketball Louisville trying to put the hammer down and what so far has been a, a good night as they try to bounce back from the loss to Virginia Virginia lost to Duke tonight in a game that was not very close 
Duke seems to be coming on strongly now, right just. Nyla. Pardon me, that's Nyla Harris of so Sydney Taylor over there flexing after that play, <laughs> but it was Harris. You're yeah, right, she, with got, the she got everybody into it. Cochran a little off cue, and Nyla Harris with another rebound. She is doing great on the boards today. She gets the put back and a chance at an extra point. Harris gets a double-double, her sixth of the season. She converts that three-point play, 14 rebounds mm -hmm. and 11 assists for Harris, who's just a sophomore. Latson inside, Timpson got hammered. Yeah, that was pretty, that was a hard one. Cochran just picked up her second. So Cochran has a double-double. We just mentioned that Harris has one as well. How about this? This is surprising to me. First time that two players from Louisville had a double-double in the same game since 2019 when they played Kentucky. Ooh, a little surprising. Yeah, I mean, they are dominating on the boards right now. It's 54 to 30. And those two players were Dana Evans and Kylie Shook. Dana Evans in the league. Kylie Shook was with the Liberty yep. in the bubble. So, and you were in the bubble. I was in Good the bubble. Good times. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to delete try, it out of my memory. Trying to it out, right? <laughs> the Jetty got hit on the perimeter by Taylor. Louisville was picked fourth in the preseason, Florida State fifth. Behind Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, and North Carolina predicted to finish in the top three. Carolina will not be in the top three. Notre Dame with a big win today against Virginia Tech. Boy, the Jetty is just going in there, initiating some contact. Drawing and a, fouls. And that's a tough break for the Cardinals. I think that was a great defensive possession for them. They got some deflections. Scott Pagetti to fumble it. And Nyla does slide over a little late. Um, so that is the right call. But I think that's still a good defensive possession for them. Harris picked up the foul. Sends Pagetti back to the line. <laughs> tough, tough night for Pagetti. He's missed 13 of 15 from the floor, including all seven threes. And they usually really depend on her three-point shooting. She averages two per game. Tenth in the league in that department, but a goose egg tonight. Yeah, and Florida State just content to kind of sit back and let the clock go down, probably just thinking about the next one. They'll be heading home to Tallahassee tonight, they hope. Good offensive rebound. And then the block by Timpson. Ricards probably should have pulled that out. Mm -hmm. I agree. If you want to nurse the clock, that's the way to do it. Another one and done. And now Ricards, who is from Queens, New York, one of the seniors record down there's your bucket Latson and Timpson have hit between them 16 shots the rest of their teammates have hit five and they each have eight made field goals the rest of their teammates have combined for five and that's not going to get it done Louisville takes a timeout. Jeff Walls is going to get his seniors out of the game and get some recognition. The cards goes out. Taylor waving to the crowd. What a way to go out for Sidney Taylor on this home floor. 16 points, 10 of them in the pivotal second quarter. 
Kiki Jefferson. 12 points, seven rebounds, three assists. And always nice on senior night to go out with a victory. And bettering their chances of getting and staying where well, they're in the top four. So you're still in the top four. You get the win tonight. The Seminoles will go to 11 and six. Cardinals to 12 and five in the league. Huge game against Notre Dame on Sunday for the Cards. And we talked. To, go ahead. Sorry, we talked about it earlier. They control their own destiny, right. and this is a great start to accomplishing what they are trying to do by getting this win at home. Yep, if they win out, they get that double by. They've taken care of one of those wins. Harris, terrific game for her. Double double, 11 points and. 15 rebounds for Nyla Harris. A career high 15 rebounds for the sophomore. Curry at the line. Florida State goes home where they will play Clemson before they head to the ACC tournament, which once again will be in Greensboro. Gordon, too little too late. But a three-point shot for Gordon. That's only the second one that Florida State has hit all night. And their first one since the second quarter. 